you need, you need, you need leadership in your life to help you weigh certain things. You need wise counsel and godly leaders in your corner. Because sometimes all of us approach decisions where we have emotional traffic. Meaning that we kind of feel like, you know, and if you ain't careful, you'll put God in what you feel like. Well, I say I've been feeling it in my spirit for a long time. Because I've been feeling it in my spirit for a long time, I figured it was the Lord. See, the problem is you're in your feelings. So you need some leaders in your life that aren't in your feelings. And they don't, come on, and they're not in their feelings. And they can look at your life from the posture of faith and from the posture of facts. Because when you get in your feelings, you ignore the facts. Am I right about it? You, 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 need, you need some leaders, you know, when you, you know, they know how to cry with you, but they, they're not as emotional about it as you are. Yeah. You, know, I just don't know. you know, and it's real. We feel that. But you need somebody that, that, can, that can connect with you where you are emotionally, but then say, now aside from that, have you looked at it this way? So God gives you several leaders. First line of leadership, he gives you in delegated authority. We know you hear directly from God. You do hear from God, okay? You know, I'm not the pastor that tells people you can't hear from God. The Holy Spirit does want to speak to you. But the Holy Spirit speaking to you does not mean you don't have to submit yourself to delegated authority. I'm just going to do what the Lord told me to do. And I want you to be obedient. God knows I do. Okay? But see, sometimes when we hear, maybe what you did here was from God. But maybe the timing is not. Because God, I believe, will speak things about your life and your future when your life is all messed up. He'll say things over you that don't match your current condition. I totally believe it. I believe it. But everything you're called to, you're not ready for. And sometimes you need somebody to say, yeah, man, I believe that. I believe God's going to do that in your life. But right now what you need to do is you just need to sit down. And you know what? Unfortunately, what happens when leaders do that, people go find somewhere where nobody will tell them that. When somebody comes along that does not say with you what you want to be said, we oftentimes go find a church that doesn't know all the facts and the truth about us, and we tell our little half-truth to them. Oh, God, I wish I had some help in this house. And we tell our little half-truth because they don't know all the facts. They, they had not seen all the little stuff you've done and all, all that stuff. So you just go in there real smooth, real slick like. But when you've got real legitimate leadership in your life, they don't negate your gift because you have issues in your life. But they also don't just overlook the issues in your life because you got a gift. Hey Amen, squad, I need to hear you. Aren't you glad for somebody who says, man, you're gifted, you're talented, this, that, and the other. But you know what? You need to work on this. You need to work on that. You need to work through this. And, and every now and you, you need to be cut. And you need to be by, by somebody who loves you and is committed to your life and your growth and your destiny. Because everybody who says yes to you doesn't mean they love you. I don't need you to say yes when I need you to say no. Don't tell me yes when I need to hear no. Don't just go along with me when you know I'm about to ruin my life. At least jump and holler a little bit and tell me, look, don't do this, don't do this. If I do it anyway, then shame on me. But don't be quiet when you see me about to destroy my life.
You know what's sad sometimes? I'm about to say, I'm about to say a thing. We need, to, we need to ponder this, though. That oftentimes the people that care about us the most are the people we appreciate the least. Y'all, I got to say that again. See, a lot of times, y'all, oh, man, oh, man, I feel this. See, a lot of times the people who care about us the most are the people we appreciate the least. They'll lose their arm for you. They'll lay down their life for you. They, 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 they would take a bullet for you. They'll go through stuff for you. But you would rather listen to somebody who does not have that type of investment in your life. They don't care like that because they don't know. See, they love you because they see what's good. This person knows all the facts and they're still committed to you. Not everybody who likes you loves you. Some people only like you because they have limited information. But I know you love me when you know what my issues and my struggles are. And you are committed to me. And you believe in me. And you pray for I wish I had somebody in the house. I want to tell somebody, stop taking for granted the folk who love you. Running behind the people who just like you. Not everybody's going to cry with you. Not everybody's going to get down in the dirt with you. Some people only like you because you're elevated right now. Some people only like you because things are going well right now. But you need the people that will say, man, I'm with you if you're crying. I'm with you if you're flying. But we in this thing together. Whether you're up or you're down, I got your back. When I don't like what you're doing and where you're headed, I'm going to tell you. But I'm still going to stick with you. And we're going to get to where you got to go. I hear what I'm saying? Come on, man. Don't lose the people who care about you. Running behind the people who are just impressed by you right now. So, so, so God gives us these several aspects of leadership and I want you to begin to evaluate these in your life God gives you parents they are godly they are well, let me say this because they ain't always godly <laughs> let me fix that <laughs> tell the truth shame the devil They're not, they're not always godly, but they're God assigned. You do know God chose your parents. Now, you may not, you may be trying to figure out, now, Lord. <laughs> but God in his wisdom knew exactly who needs to be used to get you where you are. All right. And so many times, God, now, 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 listen. Listen, the Bible says if you honor your mother and your father, your days will be long in the earth. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You don't have a right to dishonor them, whether godly or ungodly. Well, if you was any good and if you was saved like you were supposed to be saved and you was living what you're telling me to live, then blah, 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 blah. Shut your mouth. Just just close it. Just, 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 just close it. You don't disrespect the ones God used to deliver you to where you are. You may disagree and you may respect, you may disagree, but you never have permission to dishonor. And if the information is, is not godly and it's not in line with the word of God, you don't have to follow that particular information. But that's no excuse for you to go using that, using all them little religious cliches to be disrespectful and disobedient. Come on. How you going to follow a coach you can't follow your mama?
How are you going to follow your boss? You can't follow your daddy. Disrespectful children make horrible employees. Because here's the problem, here's the problem, and I love y'all, you know, I just got to help you, though, because, because you think you can say whatever you want, however you want, to your mama, to your daddy right now, and what happens is you get on your job, and the issue is mama going to feed you because she love you. She might want to knock your head off, but she going to make sure you eat. She might want to put you out. Everything in her is saying, put everything outside. But if, but, but, yeah, mom and daddy, they gonna say, ooh, ooh, ooh. But, but they, they may swing and miss, they may swing and connect, but, but after they get through fussing and carrying on, they gonna say, now come eat. Am I right about it? They may slam the plate on the table, close the refrigerator hard. But you know what that boss is going to do the first time you get disrespectful with your smart mouth? They're going to fire you. They don't care whether you eat or not. That's not their responsibility. And the coach, you know what that coach is going to say? He's going to say, all right, you don't want to listen? Next. Because after I started signing you, I started recruiting the one who was going to follow you. Y'all need to understand this because people don't want to tell us the truth because they, they, will, they will sign you and say you're the best thing since sliced bread and then that next spring they're out there recruiting, standing on somebody else's sideline, standing in somebody else's court saying now who am I going to put behind them or just in case they don't do what they're supposed to do, who am I going to replace them with? Hey Amen, squad. Say thank you, Bishop. Thank you, Bishop. I'm trying, I'm trying. Am I helping y'all? Is this helping you? Boy, you're going to be doing them drills like a madman. <laughs> you drag you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Who are you following? Because if you learn bad habits in your home, those bad habits will follow you everywhere you go. Amen. Clean up your room. I don't want to clean up my room. Do, 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 you, do you understand? Do, do, do you understand walking on top of clothes is not walking on water? So you ain't spiritual. Can you please use your ability and all that might to clean your room? Because what you do when you get that job, and you need that job, and they tell you to clean that bathroom. <laughs> Brother, I was working at K&G. I was doing good. I got to dress up to go to work. I got to see all the new stuff before they put it out on the rack. All that, I enjoyed it. Then one day they said, hey, go clean that bathroom. <laughs> I said, brother, you see what I have on? <laughs> fresh? Not fresh. <laughs> I, was on, I went on my break. I, I went on my break when they told me that. I had to take my break first. 
I talk to my mama on my break. Because I'm trying to figure out these people don't, don't know. <laughs> these people don't know. They come here to clean no bathrooms. I came here because y'all sell clothes. <laughs> <laughs> so, mama, 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 they want me to clean it. <laughs> they, they told me to clean it. Did you clean it? <laughs> I said, no, no, ma'am. Well, get in there and clean it. <gasps> Roll your sleeves up, tuck that tie inside your shirt, and clean up that bathroom. <laughs> but see, some of y'all mess your kids up because you say, well, I just quit. You know what? When they keep quitting, you're going to be paying for them for the rest of your life because they won't be able to keep a job because they don't know how to do anything they don't want to do. You better tell them, roll your sleeves up, tuck that tie inside your shirt, and clean it up. Life is not about what you want to do, and you'll never be great only doing what you like. You're going to have to do a lot of stuff you don't want to do to get to do what you love to do. This stuff right here will make a disciple out of you because there's more to serving God than shouting. We ought to shout and we ought to dance, but we ought to have some character about us. We ought to be good people and folk ought to at least like us because we're respectful and we do what we say. Y'all be seated. I'm running out of time. Boy, man, it seems like squad goal is going to have to be continued, huh? Let me, let me hurry, let me hurry. Let me hurry. You have parents. You have instructors. You have people who give you greater insight into particular areas. That's what an instructor comes to do. They come to bring you greater insight into a particular area. Okay? And you appreciate their contribution to your life. Okay? See, sometimes you have instructors you don't know they're, that they're your instructors. But God was using them to instruct you. Sometimes he's using them to show you what not to do. And sometimes he's using them to show you what to do. Right? And so when you discover the place a person has in your life, then you value that. You value them by understanding your place. But here's where you get frustrated. When a person has come to do one thing, but you try to make them be another. 